Cool, let's open up Sonic. We've been going for an hour and a half, and let's finally <laughs> get around to Sonic. See, you can do lens and optics in pretty much any language. It, you won't be able to do it as well as Haskell can. Um, you won't even really be able to get close, but you will be able to do something super useful. Um, I've used I've used optics in like uh, in Java, in Scala, in PureScript, in Haskell. Um, pretty much any any library or any application I work on, I, I import Lens just because it's so useful, or I import an optics library just because it's so useful. And so I do recommend learning optics and getting good at them, even if your language can't fully express all of Lens, all of the Haskell Lens library. It's still a useful thing. I've definitely used them in like uh, I've used them in Java and Scala and and everything else and so even though you can't get all of the benefits of Lens, you can still get a huge amount of benefits. It's still worth it. If you want to use ZSH instead of Nick Shell, oh cool, you wrote a plugin. Oh awesome, cool. I'll uh, I'll have a look at that. All right, so this is not displaying right. Displaying one. Okay, Sonic. What were we doing last time we were working on this? Uh, still working on collision, I think. Still trying to actually, because you know the collision, as you can see, is pretty, it's pretty weird. Uh, it's pretty messed up. So it was working on collision last time, um, and we're still. I, th I think it's been. We've been working on collision for the last month, and so. Um, need to figure it out. Uh, where, where have we gotten up to with it? Traction. Reset on floor. Yeah, cool, we did reset on floor. Uh, yeah, so we've been going through more of this. Fine, oh, that's right. So we've got all these functions. Find wall. All of these different functions. Find wall, find floor, find left wall, find ceiling. Yeah, so we've got all of these. And we started implementing a good chunk of those. We got through quite a few of those, which is cool. Um, yeah, that's cool. And so I think what we need to do is this part, which is like, what is it? So if the block is, if this, uh, if the mask is that, then we do find wall two. Yeah, that's right. So this is saying if we don't find, so if, if the current block that we're on is zero, like, so if, the, if there is no block that we're on, then go and look at the next one. Cause what would, well, what it's doing is trying to find um, the current block that we're standing on, or the current block that we're in, or the next one over. So that's what this is doing, I think. It looks like it's checking the current one, otherwise it checks the next one. Um, if the current one is set, then what we do at the moment is just say, well, there's no collision. So that's what we need to fix. Um, I think actually what, what I was going to do um, last time was uh, print out. I think I've remembered now that I was going to print out this collision algorithm, because We've already got a collision algorithm that's running, and you saw it, and it's it's just one that I made up because it doesn't actually work. Um, I think what I was going to do is actually make it so that it printed out the results of running our new find walls. What's find wall used by? Used by. Here we go. Check left wall dist, which is used by hit ceiling and walls, which is then used by do level collision, which is not used. Yes. So I was going to run this do level collision. So print the result of and this won't compile, but we can keep working on it. So I like to use GCID when I know that I'm going to iterate on something. So here we go. It's going to say show m of unit, and so we actually have to need to do I think exec state. Is that right?
monad state. Yep. Okay. So that's a state, and we need to do monad reader of what's this thing? What are we reading? Thank you for the follow. Has level. Yeah. Okay. So we need to do has level has angle data. Yeah. Okay. I need to make a data type that represents the angle data and what was it angle data and level all right Not as nice as what I want it to be, but that's okay. There we go. So it needs to have... I'm just going to copy and paste this for now. These dollar types are not great. They need to be fixed. That's okay, but at least we've got something. We do have something. Whoops. Alright, let's keep going. Um, so I need to write two instances. I need to write instance has level for level data. say Should be using is a run reader team. Run reader team. Whoops. Of course, it's run reader team. All right. Getting closer. Um, Extracting, I'm just putting it into a BDI type for now. I want to make this better later on. Okay, so now it's saying show game. I don't want to show the game, do I? I want to show game. Uh, I want to show the player though. Cool, okay, so now every frame I'm going to be running. Oh, whoops, I actually need to pass in the level data. <laughs> um, the level data, where can we get the level data? So we've got the chunk blocks oh yeah cool 
Do we have, yep, we got the jump blocks, cool. So I should be able to say, level data equals, uh, level, does that compile? Just passing things through. Yep, cool, that compiles. And uh, actually I need to update my undefined, I know. There we go. Level data. Sorry, I've got cats fighting just behind the door there. Two feral cats. One I found in a drain pipe. Uh, and the other one I found in the bush just next to my house, so. Okay, so every frame you can see that it's printing out um, the player location after um, after we've been collided. So you can see air off, roll on. Oh, there you go. You can see that's actually um. You can see the statuses are updating. I mean, I don't really know what um what the other numbers are representing. Uh, one's velocity, yeah, so we're getting negative velocity, I see, yep. Okay, it's doing something, um, I don't know if it's the right thing. Um, let's, I mean, what we can do is try chucking it into the, uh, yeah, I guess, um, hmm, cause we've got two, Two different things happening. Um, so I've got collide with level, which is what I wrote, but we probably don't want that. What I can probably do though is change it over to this one. I think this should work actually. I should just be able to just check this in here. I think I should be able to just chuck that in there. Awesome. Okay. So now we've switched over the collision algorithm. I mean, the, the one that we've implemented last week, mostly, well, sorry, two weeks ago, the last one that we mostly implemented last uh, like fortnight ago, um, is not finished. It's not finished. So what will happen is, I don't know, I don't know, it might not be able to even move around. It might fall through the floor, who knows. Okay. Whoa, okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's no, yeah, we fought, we, fought, we fell through the floor there. Um, yep. So this is our new collision algorithm, and I think it's because, um, yeah, what we did was only partially implemented. Um, so every frame we're going across, and we're just saying, yeah, no, there's no collision data. So that's what we need to update. Um, what we should probably do is actually, um, in here we have, what do we have? Uh, find tile, find wall. So what I'm gonna do is put in a trace in here. What I'm gonna do is actually find wall, I'm gonna put in a trace in here. Actually, pro probably find floor is probably the most important one. Yeah, find floor. So I'm gonna put in a trace. This is this is one way that I do debugging in high school is I just put in a trace. Um, if it's in this M, so if it's in like a monad, if I'm using monad syntax, I usually just do something like that. Trace show, I give it whatever I want to show, and then I'll put a pure. Uh, so this pure unit just means you know do nothing. And so what will happen is that for it to evaluate pure unit, it has to first evaluate this trace, and so it'll print out to the to the standard out. So it's just a way of doing like impure tracing inside of uh, inside of high school. And so import debug trace. So obviously this isn't actually used for, um, if you actually want to log something out for real, you want to use debug to trace. Uh, it's really just for debugging. Uh, if my trace message gets, uh, doesn't come out at all, well, I shouldn't be upset about it. It's only really useful for debugging. Okay. And our find floor is not even being called. Find floor. Okay, so find floor is not being called. No, it's not being called. Okay. Uh, okay. 
Oh, right, because it does a check floor. I see. So we haven't implemented check floor yet. Okay, so let's load up our Obj01 from our ProSonic. Then we should look at check floor. So this is someone's disassembled Sonic 2 and then they've re-implemented it in C. Or they've translated the C code, uh, sorry, the, the, the Motorola assembly over into C code. So it's not, it's not great code, but it exists. And so it's a little bit more readable to me than the assembly is sometimes. Uh, but you can see here it does a fine floor, fine floor call down here, fine floor with 10. So I'm going to say fine floor. I don't know if that's right, but looking from this, it looks like it might be right. So we'll see if uh, it finds a floor now. Uh, what I, did I put it? Yeah, I did put a debug. That's where I did put the debug. That's why I'm doing this. Because I debugged the... Uh, debug the fine floor call. Yeah. So now... Yeah, okay, so we're seeing zero, zero. There we go. So we're actually seeing values now. So you see there, 307 as an output, 307. So when I see zero, that means that there's no collision. When you see 307, there is a collision. And so if you look up in fine floor, what we do when we find that is just say, well, the distance is that, and I don't think we actually do anything with this distance. And so that doesn't really matter. Um, hit floor, is that called anyway? Hit floor. So I want to see what uh, this is outputting. So I'm just going to do my, my trick again, which is just to trace show and then pure unit. So now I should see whatever this value is, do level collision. I probably should actually put an output there just so I can distinguish between two the zeros that are going to be output. level collision 192, 199, sorry 192, yeah, and zero. Okay, so what's OX, oh wait, what's 92 in hex? There you go, C0. So it should be doing hit right wall. When you hit right wall, I'm just gonna have to keep putting traces in to see just as I trace through the program just to figure out what's happening. Cause I don't, I don't really, I mean, I translate this over from the C code, so I don't really know what's happening. I don't, I really don't understand it. I do understand a little bit. I do understand it better than the C code because it's Haskell, but um, I still don't understand it. So I'm just gonna keep putting in, here we go. Do hit right wall, so 31. So it should be hitting, whoops, negative index. Yep, I crashed because I'm using arrays in, the, I'm using lists in a place that I shouldn't be using a list. Uh, actually, that's an array. Is oh no, that is a list. Okay, so hit right wall should be called with thirty one, so it is greater than. So it should do hit ceiling then. I wonder why it's doing hit ceiling. Well, let's tr let's trace through that as well. So I'm just going to put in. I might just put in a heap of traces at the moment. Then I might just go through and put a heap of them in in each of these hit functions. So hit ceiling. Floor. Run again. OK, 
Okay, so now I should see, what was it? It was doing hit right wall, wasn't it? Uh, it does get through to hit floor eventually. So it does eventually go through to hit floor. Okay, so I'm happy with that if it's hitting the floor. Okay, so if D is, okay, so then the position Y less than D1, set the velocity. I guess um, what I'll do is I'll print out the position as it gets updated. So I've got this function called use. And so I can say get out, oh, whoops, that's not the syntax. Use the player position. So this is the Y, which is the player position. I'm going to call it PY. I'll trace out D1 and PY. Oh, whoops. Oh, that's hit ceiling. I want to do hit floor, don't I? Hit floor. Here we go. Because it didn't seem like uh, Sonic was moving around as I went around. Um, it didn't look like that. So I'm going to just put in some debugging here. So hit floor. Oh, wait. So that's if... Oh, hit floor is only hit if D1 is less than zero. If D1 is less than zero. So uh, it's actually greater than zero. I'm seeing 31 come in there. So hit floor. Hit floor. If D1 greater than or equal to zero. So I think maybe I... Did I make a mistake here? Oh, no. That's if it's greater than or equal to zero, then it returns. So I've put here, if it's less than zero, then implement this. Okay, so hit floor. Okay, if it's being called with that, it shouldn't actually be run. Okay, so. So that's fine. So it looks like it goes through them all and just doesn't, uh, doesn't collide with anything, so. Um, yeah. So it's saying, notice how um, as I go across, it's saying 31 whenever I'm not hitting something. Whenever I'm not hitting something, it says 31. But when I am hitting something, it says zero. And so it's moving me nowhere um, whenever I hit something. So here, see how it says zero. I should be moved up. It should move me up. Um, here, see how it says 31. I'm fine. I'm on the ground. Here, I should be hitting zero. Yeah. So there's places where I should be like moving up, and that's whenever it's zero. So zero means something. Well, I've got those... Um, in this code it says if it's greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, then don't do anything, return. Uh, so hit floor shouldn't be called, uh, hit ceiling shouldn't be called. Do we do hit left wall at all? I'll put that in as well, I didn't, I didn't add a debug message for hit left wall. I'll print that out as well. So I want to see left wall now as well. I'm not sure which one should actually be triggering, I don't know if hit, hit floor, hit right wall, hit ceiling, I don't know which one should actually be, be triggering, because um, I think this logic is only applying when I'm actually in one of the blocks, so I don't know which one should actually be getting triggered. So hit ceiling is always zero, that's fine, and we're not actually getting caught, hit left wall is not getting caught at all, hit, hit left wall, it's not getting caught at all, that's okay. Um, yeah, that's okay. What is getting called is hit ceiling, hit right wall, and hit floor. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's probably because hit left wall is probably only called if you are looking left or something. There's probably some... There's probably something that I didn't actually uh, implement in do level collision that's, that changes it to that. Although I can't see anything there. X velocity, Y velocity, angle. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe it's angle or something. Yeah, maybe it's angle. Okay, anyway, um yeah, it's probably angle actually that meant that says that you meant to hit left wall. Mm. Uh anyway, so let's uh so hit left hit right wall, hit floor. So when hit floor is zero so I guess that's the distance to the block. That's the distance to the block. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go through each one of these again and look at 
hit ceiling. So that's greater than or equal to zero, then it goes to hit floor. Yeah, if it's greater than or equal to zero, go to hit floor, otherwise implement this. Yep, I think I've implemented that right. Yeah, we'll have to that right. Hit left wall, not even getting called. Uh, although we don't have check ceiling implemented either. Okay, so that's fine. Floor negative ten. Let's try that. Oops. Any questions about what I'm doing? It's a bit tedious. It's just um going through what we implemented a couple of weeks ago and uh. I don't know, just tracing it, just trying to figure out if it's doing what it should be doing. But we just fall through the floor. So none of our actual, uh, like we've got heaps of things that can update the player position and none of them seem to be getting called. Um, even though it does actually look like it's changing, depend like so it's actually, it is using the, the data there because you can see as we move across, it actually does check the uh, the thing because you can see the zero like when it, it goes to 31 when we're up in the sky up here so notice how we're not colliding with anything so it's 31 we come over here and it's zero so when it's zero we're colliding when it's 31 we're not colliding and so there's something going on there actually what I probably should pay attention to also is uh the do level collision yeah so do level collision yeah so you can see the do level collision when we are going left yeah here we oh so hit left wall is getting called you can see get, hit left wall when we actually are going left hit left wall gets called So hit left wall is going to zero for some reason. So we check the distance to the left wall and we get out zero when we actually are colliding with it. So we get out zero and then we say, oh, okay, it's zero, then we should do a hit ceiling. Hit ceiling also says, I think, uh, when it's zero, here we go. So yeah, hit ceiling also says zero. So hit ceiling says, okay, then it goes to hit floor, but then hit floor doesn't seem to be getting called. Oh, because our Y velocity, Interesting. So hit floor is only active when we when we actually have a, a y velocity. Um, I'm gonna get rid of. Um, here we go. I think I've got a bug here. So I'm saying unless y velocity is less than zero, whereas I'm saying here if y velocity is less than zero, so I need to flip this and say when. Oh no, I said unless, didn't I? Yeah, unless, that's right. So unless it's less than zero, then do the rest. So that means if it is greater than or equal to zero, then we do this. So then we do a check floor. And hit floor doesn't even seem to be getting called. So I'm going to... Um, is the Y velocity less than zero? I just don't see... Oh, no, hit floor is getting called here. You can see hit floor is here. So hit floor is zero. Okay. And what did we say already? Yeah, when it's... Great, if it's greater than or equal to zero, then return. Otherwise, if it's less than zero, then we can update the position. Yeah. Um, which doesn't seem to be the case because it's zero. It's saying that we're... Uh, all of the all of our wall distances are saying zero all the time. Maybe that's the problem. I need to find a better way to like easily debug um the uh 
Sonic Rome. So what's this doing? Check floor, we'll go through and do find floor, and then what we'll do, find floor again. Fine floor and then does a fine floor. Oh, that's a secondary angle. I see. So it does it from the secondary angle. Okay, that's cool. Um, we only want to do it from the primary angle. That's fine. Uh, we should really be able to collide with the yeah. This primary collision. We should be colliding with that. That's all I've got active at the moment. There is a secondary collision, which I think is when you're going around like loops and that. There's two different collision layers. Um, I, I'd be happy just to have the primary collision working at the, at the moment. Don't need to do loops. We haven't gone up to that. So fine floor. Should be enough. One call to find floor and check floor should be enough. But for some reason, when we do a find floor, it is always getting to zero, um, which doesn't seem to be good for uh, what we're trying to do. Um, so I guess what I can do is I don't really want to start up the debugger again, but I think I might have to. Collected. Let's try, let's try to see if I can compile the Nix expression I wrote a while ago. And I don't think I actually pushed into Nix packages. Push it today. Okay, well, hopefully, we can get this going again. No. <sighs> of course. Why didn't I commit this into these packages? Probably not very excited watching me uh, update these packages, but...
good thing about Blastom is that it has a debugger built into it, so you can just just debug everything. It's really good. Um, we got Blastom. So there's like a format that you're meant to use to commit to next packages, which is uh, package name colon init at and then the version that you that you created. If you want to update, you say you write this instead, something like that. So this is for the first first version, and then for every bump that you do, you do something like that. So if you try and submit a pull request to next packages and you don't do something like that, you probably get rejected. Well, they won't reject it, they'll just tell you to tell you to fix it up. Cool, so hopefully this will compile, I'll have blast them. No, it doesn't compile. Ah, oh, that's annoying. That's annoying. docs on how to compile it though. I need that thing, or Vasm or whatever it is. And there's no mention of Vasm, whatever it is. What even is it? Cool, let's get a mirror. Okay, we'll use this. All right, let's go with this. Oh wait. Oh, whoops. What I did with the um, blast inversion is so I need to amend that commit. I mean, I'm gonna have to commit it, end it, amend it anyway. Uh, but let's update the version. There we go. That's the right version. What I was looking at, looking at before was the Vasm version. So I should do. Source is now fetch from GitHub. And the owner is M bits and bytes. Owner is that. Repo is Vasm. this one. Does that have a tag? I prefer to use a tag, but no. It's fine, I'll just use this. And that version will probably, I mean the SHA will probably be incorrect. There's like a, there's a heap of prefetch things. See, what I, what I often do, because I'm lazy, is to um, just build it. It'll come back with an error and say, hey, your shell is wrong. And then say, uh, you, I expected this one, but uh, what we got actually was, was something else. And then what I do is I usually just copy and paste over it. Um, it is a slow way, especially if you have to download something twice. Um, it is a bit of a waste. And so they've got a heap of um, next prefetch. There's next, next prefetch URL. I don't think they've got a next prefetch GitHub. They do have a next prefetch Git. Uh, prefetch. Scripts, I think you have to use, yeah. Oh, whoops, uh, there we go. There we go, we've got next prefetch git, CVS, and all, all the rest. Um, but what is, uh, 
what is missing is like a prefetch GitHub because GitHub doesn't actually always use Git. Uh, it, it, it can't, uh, there's a special flag you can use to make it use Git, but by default it will just download the zip from GitHub. Um, so I guess there's, there might be like a git, there's a Nix prefetch zip I think maybe or oh no there's Nix prefetch URL but I don't think there's a specific one for GitHub. Anyway, we've got Blastem. Let's Blastem. Cool. Okay, um, so let me commit this. Uh, do I have to, is there any, no, there's no metadata on this, so I'll probably have to put metadata on. They like metadata on each thing, so you can say that you're the owner of it. License. Sorry, this is this is not very exciting. Me updating a license of a of a package in these packages, but it has to be done. Is there a license? Here we got license. Bastom is GPL GPL three. is what fast and accurate Sega Genesis emulator Page. I mean, I'm conflicted whether to put this as this is a home page and there's the download link at the bottom, but it looks like it's more actively maintained over in this repository over here. So I'm kind of conflicted about which one to. I mean, this one's got like screenshots and stuff. Make your, oh, there we go, it does link to this. Okay, cool. Alright. Got a next expression that I'll actually push this time so I'll never have to actually write the code again. submit a pull request so you, you'll see how I work on next packages so there we go it's pushing right now if I go to github and I go to you can see that my most visited link on github is FP course um, so if I go to my if I go to next packages next LS next packages it's still pushing I'm sorry if my uh Connection's going bad because I'm uploading like a megabyte per second to, to get up. It's pushing. I must not have pushed in a while to my repository. So, refresh. Create a pull request. The title you see is init at 051. And I have built it. Actually, what I need to do is. Oh, I did run it, didn't I? It did work. So I've tested compilation. So if it's contributing, I know that. Test execution, and I built it on XOS. So there we go. Um, my screen resolution. That's a good question. Uh. My screen resolution is 1920 by 1080, and I've got two displays of those, and then I've got another display at 
1280 by 720. Um, what you can see though is a tiny, tiny amount of that. What you can see is 640 pixels wide of my massive monitors. You are seeing just a window into my world. Okay, so, got a pro request in the next packages, now we got Blaster, now we can debug our Sonic 2 ROM. Uh, I might mute, ah, oh, desktop audio is muted, cool, okay. Oh, there we go, it's actually running. Uh, there we go, continue. So I can hear that, but hopefully you can't. Um, but I need to start setting some breakpoints, don't I? Um, actually, there's a key to toggle the debugger, isn't there? I forgot what that is. Okay, so I want to set a breakpoint there. Okay, so I think what's happened, right, is I checked out, I added the um, breakpoint in. Looks like check floor is only getting triggered once I started moving down, like I jumped. And so you can see I started moving down and that's when check floor started getting, getting hit. Yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna take this, these off. Yeah, so um, it's only getting hit when I actually start moving down. Um, hmm. So I'm moving down, it starts calling check floor, uh, and then it collides with the ground. Yeah. Uh, it seems like my check floor was happening all the time, but the thing is, my velocity, I think, is pretty much always at zero, going like up or down. Like My Y velocity is zero, so... Uh, I guess when I jump, I'm moving down, so it should be calling hit floor. Um, hmm. I'm going to delete my breakpoint and I'm going to, uh, so that was check floor. Hit right wall. Yeah, I'm going to stop putting debug statements in hit. How about that? Yeah, because I want to see if this D1 gets moved up. Yeah, so I'm going to say, um, I'll, I'll still do hit floor, hit floor. Is that what I was in? I don't, Right, the comment was wrong. The comment was saying that it was hit floor, but it's not actually hit floor. Okay. So breakpoint at that. Continue. Interesting, what was that about? So I jump, and I've hit the peak, and so I think I'm moving down now. So I was testing 18 against A0. A A so it's testing the Y velocity, okay. So if I print out A0, so what's the testing it out as? If Y velocity is less than zero, which it is. So if I st step, okay, so then it returns. Okay, and this one doesn't, so this one goes to check floor. Okay. And so that's actually checking the floor, which is cool. Hopefully we'll return from this in a minute. Okay, yep. Where are we now, though? We went through to E... 1E... So it didn't actually... So we're at 1E74. Which is at fine floor. Okay, so we haven't returned from fine floor yet. Is that right? We haven't returned from fine floor? Hmm. 
Now we're in four check tile. Fine floor two. I need to be able to step over. How to, um, is that next? Is it? Is it next that I want to want to use instead? So I'll continue. Next. Okay, there we go. That's what I wanted. FC zero. Okay, so this is hit floor. We're in hit floor, and so we're just testing D one. So if I print out D one, cool. So it's testing it out. Then we go next. And it just returns. So we jump. Oh, interesting. So it doesn't actually do it when I'm. It's only when I'm when I'm moving across as well that's doing fine floor. Interesting. So how's it work? How's it colliding with the floor if it's not? So notice how if I'm. Whoops. Oh, that was the wrong button. But anyway, um, if I jump here. Notice how it's not doing, it's not triggering my breakpoint. My breakpoint is hip floor. So this, even though when we jump up and down, I don't know what I've done there to make it go in double speed, but anyway, that's pretty cool. Um, it's not, it's not actually hitting, it's not, it's, the, the, the breakpoint is not hitting hip floor. So what is it doing? What I will do is put a breakpoint in this then, I guess. So hit wall. So I won't go into there. I won't go into any of them, will it? I will go into check ref wall this, is it? Let's come down here to check left, uh, check right wall dist. And it's going down to check floor. And it's returning. Because it's not hitting anything. And then when it does hit something, hang on, let me move around. Yeah, so it's not actually doing collision. It's not doing do level collision. Interesting. I thought what we were implementing was the. Uh... Whoops. Continue. So each one, every time you're in the in the air, it's doing a do level collision. When you land on the ground, look, no no breakpoints. So it's not actually hitting do level collision. Oh, there you go. I just hit I hit something then. So it's. Whoops. Do level collision because I hit. Hit the an enemies thing. Okay, so do level collision is not what we wanted to do, I guess. Okay, so I was in the wrong place. So this do level collision I've implemented is not actually useful for when Sonic's on the ground. Yeah, so do, do level collision, look at this, it's only when you're in the air. It's only when you're in the air. Um, I'm 
it doesn't do collision unless you're in the air. So that's why my um, collision function is not actually working. Um, because we are uh, we're not in the air when I'm when I'm moving around in my game, in my version of the game. We're not. Let me go over to it. So when I when I run when I move around, we're not actually in the air, so it doesn't do the level collision. It's only when I jump that we do level collision, which still isn't working. It isn't working when I jump either. Um, but yeah, that's something I need to... Yeah, so I'm calling do level collision when I shouldn't be, because I should only be calling it when... Uh, when I'm in the air. So... Is jumping... So I'll give that a go instead. So this will only do level collision when I'm jumping then. I think more generally though, it's meant to be done when I'm in the air, um, which isn't necessarily jump. Called if Sonic is airborne, but not in a ball, thus probably not jumping. Yeah, so I need to do it. I think I need to do it more generally. So if I come over to my output over here, I should yeah, see no output until I jump and then it's doing level collision, which still doesn't work, but at least we're calling in the right place. So how does how does um collision work in normal case? In the normal case, we've implemented a heap of code that it doesn't actually get called. Jump, slope, resist. Slow Sonic walking up a slope, don't need that. Level bound, I don't know what level bound would do. Probably, oh, but yeah, I think that might be to do with wrapping levels around, because there's certain levels that kind of wrap around. So it's probably not that. Um, there you go, in jump, we do a level collision, which is, yeah, what we're doing here there. Okay, so that's cool. Um, so I guess what we, oh, where, where do we do collision? Like if Sonic's walk up, like so, let's say Sonic hasn't jumped, he's just walked off a cliff or something. We still need to do collision. I guess that's when um, the the air flag gets enabled, and so then we start doing collision again. Um, still seems like we should be doing collision to like make Sonic go up a slope, like and still collision. Or when he walks over to a wall, he should stop. Like he can't just walk straight until you go up to a wall. So there must be some sort of collision thing in here that I don't know about. Oh, maybe this. Stop Sonic from going through walls that meet the ground. Let's check walls on ground. This might be what we want. Update speed on ground, dark, look up, balance. What I want to see is something like um, where we move his x velocity, uh, x um, position, oh, sorry, y position based on the ground. So that's x velocity. Y velocity gets incremented. I think that depends on the angle that something's at, so Y velocity, like so basically if he's hit a wall while being upside down or something. Let 
I'm gonna look at where fine floor is used. I think that like fine floor needs to be used somewhere. What's this? Angle pause. Um, that's what I'll do. I'll set a breakpoint at check floor. See if check floor is even called. Cause um, we know that do level collision is not called, but maybe maybe check floor is. getting cold until I got the Okay. So check floor is not even getting hit. Um Fine floor. Let's see if fine floor is getting cold. Well fine floor is very generic though, it's for every object, it's not just for Sonic. So not even not even check floor is getting called. I'm gonna go look at object move, I guess. Um, okay, yeah, object move is like just you know apply the velocity in that, apply the velocity to the uh, to the position. So I wonder what's making Sonic move up and down. Though. I don't, I don't get that. It's not level collision. It's not check floor. I, I assumed it was going to be one of those, so I started implementing a heap of code to, to implement that, but... Sonic Display, Sonic Super, Sonic... yeah, okay, um... So it's really this, like, this is, this is all of Sonic right here, this is the, lo the whole logic for Sonic, um... Like all the way down to display, so it's got to happen before display, so it's got to happen somewhere up in here. Um, and I think really what it's doing is it's jumping to the mode that Sonic's at, so there's like MD normal, which is mode normal where it's just on the ground. Um, so basically it jumps into mode normal, I'm pretty confident of that. It goes through this, and this is all animation stuff here. I mean, animation and also control, so if you're holding left or right, it can actually like read into the control, like if the bit set for uh, whichever button you're pressing. And then it goes down and it does check, spin dash, jump, slope resist, move, roll, level bound. And that's about it, it's a sonic move maybe. just call a lot of different things um, but it must be happening in here it must be so jumps not happening slope resist I mean slope resist is meant to be so that you slow down as you're going up a slope um, oh 
I wonder when Sonic spawns, does he spawn in the air? Is that maybe how this is meant to work? Okay, so this sets this to be true. And what are they? Bit zero is left facing, bit one is in air, bit two is spinning. Bit one and bit two, that can't be right. Can't be right. I don't think they've. I don't think he's meant to be spinning in the air when he spawns, right? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, I'll put a breakpoint. We'll we'll test it out. May as well test it out. Oh, so we are in control. Okay. Oh, this is if the controls are locked. I see. Okay, so it does jump it into control. Oh, thank you so much, Ludo. Thanks for coming in. And thanks, thanks for the bids. You've taken number one. We're redoing Sonic, but in high school. Uh, I don't know if that's what you're going to be uh, getting taught at a university about high school, but uh, it is possible. Oh, thanks! Thank, thank you so much for the subscription as well. Thank you so much. You didn't have to do that at all. Thank you. Get me to come into your uh, to uni and I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell the lecturer scrap scrap your assignments. We are now implementing Sonic in high school. You like the fingerless gloves? Yeah, you, I need them down here. It was three degrees when I got up, so yeah. I need them down here, especially when I have to type so much. I only want my I only want the minimal exposed possible. Sadly, I'll have to expose my head. Maybe I don't. Maybe I should start wearing... I don't know. Balaclava. Yeah, um... This is not working well. Balaclava or programming, yep. <laughs> yeah, I reckon that's the new thing. For, for the three degree weather. This must be getting hit. Oh, skip Sonic's control. Ah, okay. Oh, right, we're getting it out. We're getting out. Right, we're getting out those two bits. We're getting out. 
I see. We we're not ending it and setting it. We're ending it out. We're getting it out. I can look like a, yeah, I look like a hacker. That's what. I ha that's how hackers are. How hackers look when they when they hack. I'll be breaking into those firewalls with that balaclava. So we're getting out those modes, and then we're jumping to it, so that makes some sense. Okay. Okay. Um. So I can print it out. I can print out the... I mean, maybe I should print it out. Yeah, I'll set a breakpoint here. We'll try again. Breakpoint. Whoops. Come on. step through it until we get to the status. So the status is zero, which means that we're just on the ground, I think. Yeah. Um, but what I wanted to know is if when you start the game, yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Uh, so let me quit. We'll run it again. And I'll set a breakpoint early on. Yeah, so I'll set a breakpoint here. And now we'll continue. And what I'll test out is what the status is when we start up the game. And when you actually spawn, what's the status? Uh, one thing I should also do is disable tails, because uh, that's just another object that, that's annoying. Options, we'll disable tails because we don't want to see him. Cool. Breakpoint is hit. Now let's step through, and we should see the status as... Uh, here we go. D0. Print out D0. Okay, so it is normal when you start. You just start normal on the ground. Okay, so you start off as normal. So I thought there might be some weird logic there, where it's like you start off in the air, um, and then it does some lot. It does the do level collision, but it doesn't even do that. Um, so you start off in, like you just start off on the ground. So I just I don't really get what. Um, where the collision is being used in the normal routine. So we've got the object 01 normal, and somewhere in this routine is um, somewhere where we look up like what pixel the level's at and then move him up and down. And I can't figure out where, like, this This is kind of like the, the what you need to look at. It's got check spin dash, which has probably got something to do with spin dash, Jump, slope, resist, move. Move I've had a look at and it looks like it doesn't really do anything. There's roll, level, bound. I haven't looked at level, bound. Maybe I should look there. There's object, move, which is just adding the velocity onto the position. There's angle, position, which is calculating the angle, I guess. Maybe angle, position is what I should look at. Um, yeah. And, yeah. I'll, I'll look at level, bound and look at uh, angle, position. Subroutine from preventing him to leave that level. Yeah, I don't think that's so. Let's look at angle pause. Subroutine to change angle and position as he walks along the floor. That's what I'm looking for. That's exactly what I wanted. I didn't think angle pause would do it, but angle and position makes sense. This is what I want to implement. Okay. Finally getting somewhere. We've implemented so much code and got nowhere, so now it's good. But it's good. It's all good. We'll, 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 we'll get this done. We'll implement angle pause which we haven't done yet. Let's implement angle pause. Subroutine to change Sonic's angle and position as it walks on the floor. And that's exactly, 100% exactly what I want. All right, let's get it done. Angle pause. I'll implement this function, we'll test it out, then I'm done for today. There's, I'm sick of working on Sonic at the moment. This is... Yeah, this is not going well. I implemented the completely wrong thing, Ludo. I implemented this function, and you can see it took me a while to implement all of this code. Well, even more. Even more. Even more. Yeah, I implemented all of this tried it out, and it did, it's not what I wanted. <laughs> it 
it's not what I wanted at all. Um, I wanted this function to I wanted I wanted to implement this function down here. So I have to copy all this code into Haskell, which yeah. Okay, let's pretend I didn't do that. Um, yeah, it took, probably probably took me like you know two streams to implement all of this code. So uh, yeah, that was fun for everyone. Getting late on the other side of the globe. Yes, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming in. Good luck with reverse engineering on the Nix Eater and lenses. Interesting, awesome. Thanks for coming in and thanks for the, thanks for the good words. Um, I will get further along with Sonic. Um, but yeah, um, maybe next stream I'll do something more like uh, working on code balls or something. It seemed like people really were interested in like things like lenses. And if I can talk about Scott and coding, I think that's another topic. That's that's a nice topic. Um, has some good implications, so I could talk about that. So yeah, I'll have a go at that. Um, Hopefully I can get some Sonic done today and then we can we can do something else uh, next stream for a little while. Thanks for coming in and thanks for chatting. I want this to have, uh, so it has angle data, I think it has angle. the emulator since I think we know that we need to implement angle pause. So here we've got like we do level collision and down here I think we want to do uh, angle pause. Yeah. So now we can actually go through this as we are uh, and we can actually test it as we go which is not something I did with before which was a little bit boring. Uh, so we've got angle data, get out the angle data of D0, what's D0? Not documented. Let's go to the C code. Uh, angle pause. Oh, here we go. It does call fine floor. So angle pause. I was looking. I was actually looking at this before because I was searching uh, what uses fine floor. So I should have known. I should have known that this uses fine floor, and this is probably like you know, it's changing the x position, y position, it's changing all of this. So I should have actually noticed. I thought it was just going to do Sonic something about the angle, but it does a lot more than that. This is a big subroutine. Uh, I think half of it though I can probably get rid of because I think half of it's special case to like if you're upside down or something. Nah, it's a massive subroutine though. Look how big that is. How many lines of code is that? It's about 300 lines of code. A little bit over 300 lines of code. Yeah, it's a pretty big subroutine. Uh, although some of it's, I guess, comments, and half of it, I think, is probably going to be able to be deleted because it's just duplication. Okay, let's go through it. So, read out the player status. I'm guessing P is, like, our state. Yeah, so we read out the status, and we check it with 8. What's that mean? Yeah, we test if, it's, if the 8 bit is set. Sorry, no, we set it to test if the third bit is set. So we test bit three. If so, what's that mean? So the third bit, bit three is on object. Is that right or am I looking at spinning? I don't know which one I'm looking at. It must be on object. Zero, one, two, three. Must be this one, on object. So if it's on object, 
then skips, and I'll, I'll leave a comment there because we don't have the concept of on object. But let's say when unless it's on object, then we do the rest of it. Then what do we do? D zero. So then we set. Set the angles to zero. So we move, move three into D zero, and then we set the angles to zero. And then we get out. Why are we moving D zero into the angles? Why are we setting the angles to three? We move D zero into the primary angle. And then we get out an angle. Why do we do that? Alright. I think that would look like um, player dot angle. Right. Um, the compiles, and I mean, that looks like what it's kind of doing setting the player's primary angle to three. I don't understand what the hell that means, but um, anyway. Then we get angle, which I think is from the angle data. Let me make sure angle. Oops, angle. Is that a constant? It must be a constant angle. Angle about the Z axis. Oh, okay, but we set, hang on, hang on, what am I doing? Here, I'm setting, I'm going to be getting out the angle. What's primary angle? It seems unused. <laughs> okay. I'll ignore, I mean, it says seems unused, so I'll ignore it. So we set it to three and then it seems unused. Okay. All right. Um, seems unused. So ignore these lines. They don't exist because it seems unused. Instead, let's focus on this part. So let's get out the angle and add 20 to it. Get out the angle, add 20 to it, if, so I say, uh, what should I say, if it's, unless it's greater than or equal to zero, or I'll say, if, unless it's, le when it's less than zero, ah, I want, I want that, don't I, unless it's less than zero, oh, wait, no, this is, if it's greater than zero, quit, right, yeah, so I say, unless it's, uh, I'll say when, when it's that. When A is greater than or equal to zero, then quit. So if I change it to an unless, that means I keep going, and so then I can get out the angle and check if the angle So unless, if you add 20 on it, it's greater than zero, and, oh wait, now it says D zero is, get out the angle, get out the angle, if it's less than zero, then 
take one of it. Okay. If it's less than zero, take one. Otherwise, leave it. So that's that, and I think I've translated that over well. And then I say that plus 20. This is weird, but okay. And then we go down to 92. So then we come down here and then we start checking. So I can say case. So I say, hang on. And with that, then I can say case D0 of do is say uh, that. I think below I've actually got some code similar to this which is uh, actually just above you can see here just so like that except instead of take 20 it's plus 20 right yeah plus 20 all right so case of 4080C and something else. Oops. And I'll replace each of these as pure, which means do nothing for now. So do nothing, do nothing, do nothing. Does it compile? No, because why? I've got a syntax error somewhere. Oh, do. There we go. All right. Um, so this will be the else case. So then where I've got this underscore, this will be this. So I need to translate that over for that. Um, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to say trace show. I'm going to run it and we're going to see which of these branches is going to take when we run the game. I want to see which one I should focus on implementing first. I mean, that was a lot of, of I don't know, byte-based code that I wrote at once, so I don't know. Okay, it's not even getting called. It wasn't even getting called. Maybe because the player angle. Probably. Probably because of the angle. So get out the angle, plus 20, if... Then we go down to 86, uh, and 86 looks like what? Okay. Right, so I assumed that this 86 was go to return, but it probably isn't. No, it's not. Here we go. This is what we want. So, if it's greater than that, So now we've got, so if it's greater than zero, then we go down here and we do this logic. Otherwise we do undefined at the moment, I'll undefine it. So we get out the angle, which we've got, get out the angle. If the angle is less than zero, then we add one to it. Give that a go. 
Actually, I think I missed something there because I did plus 20. Yeah, so D0 equals plus 20. Then D0 equals the angle. Uh, okay, yeah, no, that's fine. All right, it's still not being printed out, is it? Oh, I'm not. I, I removed my trace. Whoops. All right, hopefully now we'll see some debugging statements. We should see Sonic, uh, I don't know, we should see some something about what state he's in. I think I think that state is like what angle he's looking in. So if he's looking left, right, up or down, or like if you're upside down or whatever, it should come up with like a number to basically represent where you're going and where you are. So zero, zero is the one. Okay, so zero is the one I should focus on and zero is this case. So I should start implementing this code here. So we get out the position, we get out the radius, we add the radius onto the position, is that right? Yep, we add the radius onto the position, then we add, yep, radius onto position. Then we get out something, we do fine floor. Yeah, we do fine floor, okay. Fine floor with OX10, that's cool. And what's the second argument to fine floor? The wall disk. Oh no, we don't even have to do that. So that'll come out with a wall disk. Yeah, it needs a vector. Yeah, that's right, it does. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I need to say, find floor with P, except P needs to be, uh, yeah, so we just get out the player radius. So the player position. I think this is similar. I've got something here somewhere that's similar to this. Something like that. Anyway. Okay, so P will be the player dot position. Use the player position. Couldn't match C int. Oh, did I flip these around? Yes, cool. Something to add has level up here. It compiles, and now I need to add the position with the um, radius. Cool, and I need to add the radius on. I don't know if that'll work. It's not a semi-group. It's not a semi-group. So what can I do? How can I append these two together? Is it not a monoid either? Why is it not a semi-group? Should be able to append two vectors together, right? Oh, you can just plus, can't you? There we go. Ah, could just use plus. That's more simple. Okay, now let's run this and we should see debug message. Every frame of the distance between Sonic and the floor. Hopefully. So we should see Okay, yeah, that's the distance between him and the floor, I think. Um, some of those numbers are a bit weird, but some of them are good. 
Like 304, that looks a bit weird, but 28, okay. Even then there, it look, looks a little bit weird. Maybe I need to, I don't know, maybe the radius is off or something. Um, but anyway, all right. And so that's fine floor for, this, for the second collision, I think, is it? What is it? Angle pause. Get out the radius, yeah, X and Y radius, add them together, go through, run fine floor, and then when we come back, we change the Y position. Hang on, we put the Y position in D2. So what do we do there? So fine floor. It goes A4. Yeah, I don't know about that. Hmm. So we do a fine floor and then we do a fine floor. Yeah, so one's on the primary angle, one's the second secondary angle. Yeah, we're not doing anything about the secondary angle. Like I said before, the secondary collision and the secondary angle, we're not worrying about. We're just worrying about the primary collision, primary angle, because that's all we, I mean, that's the majority of the level. The level is mostly primary. Uh, there's a little bit of secondary, I think, which is around the, uh, around loops and things. There is there is secondary collision, but we can ignore that for now. And so we do fine floor, and um, we are updating some RAM with the result of fine floor. I think with whatever A four is, which is I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we're doing with the result. Um, so we've got this wall distance R type that I'm trying to print out right now. So I'm 28 pixels. So I'm guessing that's X and Y. I'm some 28 pixels higher than the ground. Yeah, 28 pixels higher than the ground. I mean, I, am I offset by 28? Is that how high Sonic is? That might be how high Sonic is. Um, I don't know what to do about that though. Let's go through the code and figure out more about what we can do. Okay, so we've got the X in position, Y position, and that's the primary collision, I think, and this is the secondary collision. Let me look at find floor and see what that's meant to return as A4 in the A4 point. Uh, find floor. Returns the angle in A4. Okay, so we're setting the angle. We're using the angle. Okay, so in angle pause, we can look at. Where do we use A4? So we're checking it there. We're checking it there. Cool. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening here. I don't know what this N is. So it can be angle banging, uh, depending on the ang uh, the train steepness, yeah. Maybe there are two points of contact, an upper and one downhill. Um, I, I Like there is angle data in it and the angle data will have that data. Um, so that, that does exist. 
that definitely does exist. Yeah, it's 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 there. It exists. Um, and I think that's what our so five floor will return the angle of the floor. Yeah. Um, yes, it'll return the angle. So five floor will actually return the angle data. Um, so here it will actually return the angle data. So the first index is block index. Ah, okay. So there's a couple of things going on here. Yes, because I've only partially implemented find floor. It returns the block index, which is cool. So you can see here. Ah, okay. Yep. So this is something that you just made me realize, which is that um, so three or four is the block index. So it's actually when you um when it looks down, it actually finds the uh, block index of three or four. And so three or four is like a it's got some attributes in it. It's just a number that represents the uh that block that you're standing on. And so D1 and the angle data, I'm not actually using the angle data. So I'm actually saying the angle is always zero and I'm actually not even saying that the distance, I'm saying that the distance is always zero as well. So that's, that's a problem. Um, so that's a problem. So I need to actually implement this distance function. So a function that I'll actually calculate the distance from Sonic, from the position that you are to the block. I haven't done that yet. So that's, that's a really good point. I haven't done that. Um, and the angle data, as you're pointing out, there are, there are ang angles on each of the blocks and I'm not returning that either. So I'm not actually using the block data to um, to figure out what the angles are. I haven't done that yet. That's something I didn't actually get around to implementing. So that's something I need to implement. But let's say it was implemented. I'm going to pretend that it was implemented. And that means I should come down here and do, is it sonic angle, is it? Subroutine to change Sonic's angle as he walks along the floor. So I need to implement that. So I need to implement this function, which will change his level. Here, change his angle. So that's Sonic Angle, cool, I'm happy with that. And here we go, this is moving the Y position and yeah, it's moving the Y position. So I guess he can move up and down as he goes across. So that's why the Y position is getting changed, yeah. I should do this on the knit frame, but it doesn't, okay. Um, if the distance is zero, then do something. If the distance is greater than zero, then do something. If the distance is less than a lot, then quit. Okay. So I should be able to say, so what was it? Wool, this is wool dist, which has got the block ID, which we don't care about. Then it's got the distance and the angle. A4 was the angle. Cool. So we're actually, we're getting the data out. That's awesome. Sonic angle, which calls sonic angle down here. I don't know with what. Probably with A4. Yeah, probably with A4. Increment. So yeah, we need to do this this logic. So if d1 is zero, then we come down here to one c and we quit. Okay, so that's just okay. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to leave it at this in a minute as, long, as soon as I implement this uh, this branching. Basically, if it's greater than zero.
This is weird. So, I mean, the distance, if the distance is less than a whole block away, then we do nothing. So like that, because this, um, this is 15, right? So it's negative 15. So if you're, um, if the distance is like, I guess that means if you're in a block, if you're actually in a block, so if the floor is a, if you're all the way in the block, like at the bottom of block, then we do nothing. Something like that, I guess, and what's these two cases? So this function So this one we just change the y position, so we say the player position y equals plus equals a D1, what's D, yeah, D1. Does that compile? Cool, it does. And this case is this big log logic down here, um, which I'm gonna leave as undefined right now. Uh, actually, I'll put it as an error of that. So then if I ever hit that, I know where to jump to and implement. Cool. All right. This won't work. Oh, maybe maybe it'll run. It won't it won't do anything useful, but it might run. I don't know, depending on if we're going to hit this error pos position here or not. Yeah, I think it'll just quit out here. It'll just stop right there. It's basically, if you're always standing on the ground, it doesn't do anything. Nope, nope, it actually did hit this. It actually did hit that. Maybe I could have a quick go at implementing this. And then, I'll, then we'll, we'll finish up. Um, yeah, we'll finish up with, with this, because it should only be down there, it should only be this many lines that we have to implement. So D0 is the X velocity shifted by 8, so that's the, um, I think I've got a function that does that, um, and so that's, D, if that is less than 0, then we negate it, D0 plus 4. So it's the x velocity shifted over by eight plus four. If that's greater than e, then we set it to e. Hmm. Y position plus d one. So d one. Okay. So this is just a condition that we don't update it. Okay. So I need to. I'll just put in a comment saying. Comment is just implement the checks, and here I'll put an undefined, and it looks like y. We just implement what we just increment y plus one. So basically, what we've got down here. I mean, there are some checks that we have to do, but we're skipping the checks for now. And this should do something. I don't know what, but it'll do something. Just stay still. Yeah, that's cool because um, I mean that makes sense because uh, with our fine floor, we're not actually getting out the uh distance. We've just stubbed it out to be zero, so the distance is always zero. So what I need to do now is um, yeah, what I need to do now is make it so that when you walk across, it actually gets out the distance between Sonic and the and the floor. So fine floor actually, I need to actually implement fine floor. So then when you're moving across, Sonic will actually move up and down according to according to the floor. So cool, I think we're getting there. If I implement fine floor, we'll have something happening. Um, it might take a little bit of effort to implement fine floor because of the data structures I'm using for the actual level, but if we were to implement fine floor, then I reckon if we move left and right, we'll actually have Sonic properly moving across the ground. And then when we jump, we can start implementing do level collision, which will I don't know, actually do something useful other than doing what it does at the moment. There we go, finally. 
Okay, cool. Well, I'll leave it there. Is there any questions about what we've done today? We've done quite a bit. We've done lenses, we've done Eater, and we've done a little bit of Sonic. So is there any questions about what we've done? I'll find someone else to host. Uh, Komet raided me, so I might raid someone else. Come on, creative. Programming, let's see, someone who's doing something somewhat a little bit related to functional at all. Go is not functional, C is not very functional. Come on, someone do a little bit of pro functional programming. Here we go, Conway Game of Life. Uh, there's five viewers there. Uh, maybe I will raid them today. Maybe I'll raid them. Math Proofs and Stories, let's go to that one. The safe word is. We'll host the we'll raid the safe word is. It's mathematics, which is more like functional programming than what C is. So we'll go to that. That looks good. This is someone real quick down here doing something. This ML environment is probably not OCaml, it is probably machine learning, so we'll skip that. I hate how the ML acronym has changed from what I Something that used to be interesting to me to something that's like not very interesting to me anymore. Oh, machine learning's okay. I'm not. I don't know. I'm not very good at it. Cool. So I will host the safe word is because they are doing something about math proofs. Functional programming is proving using mathematics. So so that'll be good. Cool. So I'll see you all next week. Thanks for coming in, everyone. Uh, thanks. I don't know if Ludo is still here. Probably not. I think he just went live actually. Um, thanks for the subscription. Thanks for all the bits. Thanks for all the follows today, everyone. Um, I'll see you all next week. I'm sorry that I didn't make it last week. I was caught up in Ed Komet's stream and then I had to do a heap of work, so didn't get around to it. I'll upload this to YouTube. I'll try and cut it up into segments because we talked a bit about Lance, we talked a little bit about Eater, and we talked a little bit about Sonic. Well, we did spend an hour or two on Sonic, so I'll try and split it up so that, you know, there's something... You don't have to watch the whole thing to figure out whatever part you like. Cool. Hopefully next week I'll actually um, try uh, to do um, a little bit of uh, Code Wars. I'll, like, I'll have a go at... Um, Maybe it's content coding, that one seems like the most interesting to me, so I'll have a go at that and then we'll get back to Sonic. I think we're making some progress, finally. It's taken a lot of weeks, it's probably taken a month where we've not really done a huge amount or not done anything. We've, we've written code, but we haven't actually been able to run it well, so hopefully next week we'll get something that works a bit better. Cool. Say hello to the safe word is for me, and hopefully uh, he's doing some cool proofs. See you next week.